Hello everyone and welcome to Going Bush, the show about our forests, the people who work in them and the industries they support. That's right Nick, now did you know that in 2011 it is the United Nations International Year of the Forest and because of that we'll be displaying this logo from time to time to remind you. The other thing about this year's series of shows is that we're focusing on the stories that you at home wanted to see. That's right, if you've emailed us stay tuned, you may be surprised. Now in the past 12 months there have been some pretty radical changes mooted to the way we do things in the bush and that's just one of the things on our agenda here's a look at what's coming up searching for common ground industry and environmentalists brokering an end to tasmania's forestry wars the ongoing regeneration story in victoria's high country plus dirt roads and rally cars all in today's installment of going bush Yep, huge program to kick off the fourth season of Going Bush and we welcome our Victorian and New South Wales viewers for the first time, Nick. That's exactly right, Andrew. Now, viewers in those states may well be aware of the tensions that exist in the yes. Tasmanian forest industry. What they may not be aware of is a new deal that's on the table attempting to bring peace to the Tassie forests. For going on 30 years, the issue of logging in Tasmania's native forests has been the subject of, at times, bitter disagreement. Industry has held the line that the native forest estate could be managed indefinitely for sustainable production, while environmentalists claimed irreversible damage was being done. When the two sides came together, talk of peace was usually not high on the agenda. <laughs> In the past 18 months, a chain of events has unfolded that has seen a historic statement of principles agreement for a new direction in the Tasmanian timber industry. A landmark day for the Tasmanian forest industry. Agreement reached with environmental groups over future forestry practices. Ten environmental industry and union groups thrashed out the landmark agreement in October last year, essentially arriving at a set of principles upon which the restructure would be based. I think there's been an awareness from a whole lot of different groups in the forestry debate that we couldn't keep on going like we were. Um, I don't think anyone was winning from the sort of community conflict and difficulties that were occurring. And I think a whole lot of people with um, the right goodwill and the right attitude have come together and tried to work out how we can change the forest industry to achieve both a sustainable economic future and also to achieve some of the conservation outcomes that some of the environmental NGOs have been campaigning for for a long period of time. At its heart is a move away from native forest harvesting into a plantation-based industry, a move driven as much by changing commercial realities as changing community expectations. I share the concern that people have of the divisive nature of our forest debate in this state. And I am hopeful that now we've got industry coming together with the environmental NGOs, that we might be able to find some way that we can be all proud of our forests and move forward. Our forest industry is an industry we ought to be proud of, and we have to be able to protect the environment while also ensuring that we have a viable industry which includes uh, native forestry. From an industry point of view, it's a matter of progress or perish. The shake-up offers the chance of an organised restructure rather than grinding gradual decline. The issues are, 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 have been numerous and in Tasmania it must be recognised that the, these were quite unique. Uh, we, we had issues in relation to obviously the global financial crisis and what that was doing to a number of uh, timber markets, uh, not only domestically but internationally. We had issues with contractors. We're basically in the industry for a number of years now. We've had too many contractors for the amount of wood that's being actually processed. Controversial timber giant Guns has for decades been the dominant player in the Tasmanian native forest sector, both as sawmiller and global wood chip exporter. But in the face of falling demand and a surging Australian dollar and greater competition from high yielding plantation pulpwood, the company has turned its back on native forest products, a move that sent shockwaves through both sides of the timber debate. None of this would have been possible without having Guns saying, OK, we're going to walk away. 
because they have been the biggest problem and their predecessors, you know, with these massive first concession systems, then completely unsustainable resource allocations made to them. Driven politically, and, you know, I think this is fair to say, of, this, of state forest managers, Forestry Commission and Forestry Tasmania, they didn't set those resource allocations. They were set by politicians. <laughs> Um, in response to pressure from industrialists. Because this is a game changer, because we're looking at a paradigm shift, we can actually consciously design the kind of forest industry that we want. And I think there's some very, very big opportunities in that. For green groups, that would mean a moratorium on logging in so-called high conservation value forests. While for industry, the exit of guns may allow existing long-term wood supply contracts to be filled largely by less sensitive regrowth forests. What may be harder to sell is the time frame in which a transition to a plantation industry can be achieved. What's meant by a transition for the industry? What's meant by a transition from native forest to plantations? What do we have to look at in relation to that issue to make sure it's done properly? Because if we don't do it properly, um, what happens is that we have a, a bad outcome for the industry, a bad outcome for the communities that rely on the industry, and a, and a bad outcome for the environment as well. So it's critical that we have a good, thorough debate about these issues. One issue that needs to be sorted out and sorted out pretty quickly is the ongoing operation of the state's wood chip mills. That's right, Nick. They are vital for processing forest residue, but guns wants out. Well, right now what we've got is a process that's in place with uh, Bill Kelty, who's helping us to work through where that common ground is around the Statement of Principles. And we want to allow that process to occur. Ideally, it'd be good to get something that all of us can live with. But we don't want to see the end of native forestry overnight either. This is something that does have a long-term future. It is important for Tasmania that we do still have native forestry. The other option is looking at alternative uses for the timber that is currently assigned to the chip mill. When we proposed the rotary veneer mill, basically taking pulpwood logs that used to go to the wood chip mill, everyone said that was impossible. Um, we've got a few projects we're working on looking at using that part of the tree that isn't suitable for high value sawn timber or for rotary veneer for some other products, um, some other engineered wood products that have a lot of potential. Um, there's lots of things that are possible if you look at it a bit differently.